Um, okay, so I am Kim Howard and I work for Kentucky Autism Training Center. I recognize some faces out there. Um, I cover KVEC. My background is I'm a dual certified special education teacher. I was in the classroom for about 14 years. That's a long time. And I've been in this job for about nine years. Um, March actually makes nine years for me. When I took this job, they told me it would be one year contract and they didn't know if it would renew. And I just thought, you know what? I'll try something different for a year. Um, so I've taught all grade levels. A couple, my first couple of years was high school based. Um, high school, middle school is tough. I've also, the year that I was pregnant was the year that they put me at middle school. I will tell you my fun middle school experience. I co-taught um, health class. We had a lot of our MSD population, um, high functioning MMD, LBD kiddos were in one specific health class. And uh, just about the time that I got quite big and pregnant was when they did their sex education unit. <laughs> and so <laughs> there I was <laughs> with my giant pregnant belly. I had reached the point that I could no longer sit in a kid's desk. Um, and all of the kids are looking at me <laughs> and, and I'm going, oh God. <laughs> yeah, kids, here we are. Um, so that was my fun middle school health sex education class. Um, it was probably the most embarrassing time of my life. I heard one of the little kids go, I know what she's been doing. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't know who's more embarrassed by this. <laughs> we're all embarrassed. Um, so we're gonna talk about inclusion-based practices for middle school, high school level. A lot of the things that we're gonna talk about will fall for those, those uh, I'm gonna talk about it in the terms of kids with autism, but I've taught across disabilities, across a lot of, Abilities, disabilities, whatever you want to say. So these will apply for many, many of your students, I hope. Um, we're going to stick with just a couple of strategies today. And I have uploaded this PowerPoint and other handouts into their, into their Google Drive. So you have access to everything. Don't feel like you have to take notes unless you just want to. There are, it's up there for you, so you don't have to deal with it. So um, it's on this, on this sheet, I think I am inclusion-based practices, the first one right there on that, on that bit if, if you're looking for me. All right, I'm gonna roll with it. And I will usually say, um, feel free to interrupt me uh, if there's something you need clarification on, if there's something that uh, you have a question about, stop me, I won't be offended. And there's no, I can't see a clock, right? So I think we're supposed to be done at 1.45. We will be done. If I'm not done, flag me down. I won't be offended. <laughs> I want my 10 minute, 15 minute break too. <laughs> um, and it's a long day and it's after lunch. So I get it. All right, we're gonna talk about strategies for kids with autism. Um, visual processing is typically stronger for our students with autism. So anytime I can make something visual, I'm gonna win. Um, and I'm gonna be able to support that student much more effectively than if I'm just using words. Because what happens to words? They disappear, right? They disappear. It's how come I made sure today to upload that PowerPoint for you all. Because if I'm lucky when you leave here tonight, you got eight hours, last night, you got your eight hours of sleep, six to eight hours of sleep, your life is going smooth and easy right now. You don't have a lot of stressors in your life. Um, then if I'm lucky, you're gonna remember maybe, when you walk out the door, you might remember 70% to 80% of what I say in the next hour, maybe. If your brain is on fire and you're really into it. Now, if you had a crappy night, you didn't sleep well, your, your life is like mine and it's chaos and crazy and they're always calling and saying, so-and-so's gone to the hospital or, well, you know, this broke down or somebody's got something going on. <laughs> Big family, there's always a problem. You know, or always, it's all good, but it, there's always something chaotic going on pretty much in my life. Then probably, maybe, you're gonna remember 50% of what I say in the next hour. So think about that in the context of your students who may have ADHD, our friend, right? Um, executive functioning issues, behavior disorder, and they had a, they're already emotionally a train wreck. Maybe they're a kid with autism or they have a mild mental disability and they're thinking their ability to think clearly and to stick with your topic may become a bigger challenge for them. So visual supports are your friends, right? Um, 
absolutely that's going to be the place that I would start. And we'll talk about different ways that visual supports should and could look for high school. Um, understanding the meaning of, con of abstract concepts. Uh, I've told my personal child when he was upper elementary age, he was telling jokes and I said, you're killing me, man, you're killing me. Abstract concept of, uh, it's non-literal language, right? I'm using, you're killing me. Well, he said, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to kill you. No, uh, really, I just meant you're funny. That's really funny, it actually was a pretty funny joke. I'll never forget his little sad face. You're killing me. Um, so think about that, especially as we get older, definitions get, it gets harder, vocabulary gets harder. We use a lot more sarcasm. Um, high school teachers, middle school teachers tend to, be, tend to use a lot more sarcasm, uh, which makes sense, it's not wrong, but for your students with autism, they may not read that at all. Yeah. Yeah, it's real or it's nothing. Yeah. Right, absolutely. <laughs> it's real or it's nothing. Um, and then processing out, understanding that verbal language. We need to give students additional time to think. Think about, so it's after lunch. If I ask you all to do a complicated task, I know you just have your bellies full, I hope, right? I hope you got something good to eat. So now you're settling in, your brains are a little tired, you've already heard three or four hours of lecture, which is tough on any human brain, including adult brains. Um, if I said, let's do this really complicated task now, we are all gonna need more time to process and more time to produce some kind of output. The same thing happens for our students. Um, and they're probably living in that all the time, especially if they're struggling from executive functioning issues, ADHD, autism, um, traumatic brain injury, all of those can uh, muddle your thinking sometimes. So nine reasons that we use visuals. Visuals are permanent, right? It gives us that processing time. It's gonna help kids transition. Um, it's gonna help kids see what you mean. And the nice thing is visuals help all students. Visuals are gonna help everybody. Uh, they build that independence. We want our kids, especially middle school and high school, we're going to age out at 18, you know, four years of high school at 18 or maybe to 21. It depends on their situation. Kids are going to go away. School isn't a permanent thing, right? We want them to be independent as possible. Um, visuals transfer. They go with the child between adults, between classes, um, and they don't have an attitude, <laughs> right? Visuals don't have an attitude or a tone. They're not conveying disapproval, and visuals can be blamed. Well, gosh, guys, the schedule says it's now time to go to Mrs. Parker's class. I hate Mrs. Parker's class. I'm so sorry, but the schedule says it's not me. <laughs> it's the schedule. <laughs> it's an abject thing, an, an, an object that I can now blame for all kinds of things. <laughs> um, and they help reduce anxiety. So take about two minutes at your table. Talk about what visual supports have you used today. Talk to your neighbor, I know. Nobody's gonna talk now. Take two minutes, talk to your neighbor. What visual supports have you used today? The handouts. The handouts. Your phone. Labeling. It, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, oh, I love Teach Town. Yeah. Yeah, Teach Town is great. Teach Town is great. All right, guys, if you can come back together for me. 
So as an adult, we use visual supports, right? Today, I use the traffic signs out on the road. I'm not from Hazard. The town that I live in does not have a red, we don't have a, a red light in the town I live in, right? We have a, we have a three-way stop. We don't even have a four-way stop. Yeah. Right. So I'm using, I'm looking at my map. I'm using, I'm counting traffic lights to get here. Thank God for Google map, right? <laughs> my, I saw a very funny meme that said in the 1990, we live like pirates. Uh, we would just print out our map from MapQuest and take off with our treasure map and hope that it got us there, right? Um, it's very much a different time. All right, guys, come back to me, okay? Come, yep, thank you. Come back to me. So we use visual supports as functional adults. And I'm going to say, if you made it here today, you are, a, you are a fairly functional adult, right? You made it here, you got here, maybe not on time, maybe on time, but you had to set a day on a calendar, right? You had to set a day on your calendar and say, I don't even know what day it is, Friday, February. It is February, not March. I don't know what month it is. I said I was a fairly functional adult. That's why I have a calendar. I can open every day and look. Absolutely. I have a paper calendar. I have a dry erase calendar that's color coded. Mom is home is, is, is green. Mom is gone overnight is red. Like, it's color coded because I need that. My husband might use it occasionally, but I want them to know where, if I don't come home tonight, what part of the state should they look for me in? <laughs> you know, where should they go to find me? Because they may not know. Um, so we use visual supports. So when we're teaching any kind of visual supports to students, we're teaching them a lifelong skill, right? Using that schedule, and schedules could look like a hundred different things. I don't know about you all, but I have reached the age of sticky notes are my friend. My, I got COVID last January, I got COVID. And ever since then, my brain, my ability to remember stuff is a little less, little less clear, clear, clarity there. My clarity is gone. And so I need my sticky notes and I very much need my schedule because I can't even remember what month it is apparently. <laughs> um, maybe it's a to-do list. It could be all kinds of things. So this is my general rules for does a student need an actual visual schedule? And by visual schedule, I mean it could be handwritten. If they are a student who reads, write out their schedule. Maybe it's inside of their agenda. Maybe it's just on a sheet of paper. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be picture based unless they're a student who needs picture based. Um, the nice thing is, is that visual supports can be flexible. We can scale them up. Maybe I have a student who's completely a non-reader um, who needs a picture based schedule all day long great, then that's what they need. Maybe I have a student who reads really well, and but they have anxiety buildup, <laughs> and they need that schedule to tell them, here's where I go. I worked with a student that was in a science class out there, fully included into regular science class without support. Well, he did pretty good, but he needed science involved a lot of some days there was a lab so they were getting out and they're going around all of the all of the sciencey equipment right some days they were sitting at their desk and they were doing more lecture based stuff so every day science class looked pretty different um, and he was having he was having a very hard time just within that one class uh, so we established a sticky note schedule <laughs> every day when he came in the teacher had written it out on a sticky note. It said 15 minutes of lecture, 30 minutes at your station two with your lab partner. That was his, the whole schedule for science. It was just written on a sticky note. You can put it in there in the moment. No big deal. It doesn't need to be a lot of prep time for that. But it made a huge difference for that kid. Those three sentences made him feel much more comfortable about what was going to happen. So he didn't have to have anxiety about when do I go to my when do I go to my lab station? Or when do I sit down? Or when can I go turn on the Bunsen burner, right? When can I go do those things? Um, I had a student this, this year uh, who was having a hard time transitioning from one class to the other because of the work that they didn't complete in the class before. So my note for him, I oh. took a sticky note and put it in all of his binders. If you don't get this done, you can do it in Mr. Hunley's class. Awesome. So, 
That was a perfect, that's perfect. So exactly. So a visual support that says, if you don't get done with your work, you can do it in Mr. Hunley's class. Am I saying that right? Yes, okay. So just a visual support. Hey, guess what? A sticky note that says, if I don't get done with my work, because that is anxiety producing. I didn't get done. When am I going to do this? I don't want to take this home. Or maybe that's too much for me, but just a visual reminder. So a visual support could be, it's broad, right? It's about figuring out what does my student need in this moment that can make their life easier and my life easier and better. So that's what I like about it. So what is executive functioning? I always tell people executive functioning is your brain has filing cabinets, right? So it's like, it's like a lovely filing cabinet. And if your executive functioning skills are working really well, then your brain can go in there and it can open the right drawer and go into the right file and produce the information that you need right now to do the things that you need to do, right? So executive functioning covers planning, organizing, um, working memory, all sorts of things are wrapped up into that part of your brain. Executive functioning skills um, are definitely a challenge many times for students with autism. Definitely a challenge that I see for students with ADHD, students with anxiety sometimes. Um, across the board, this is something that our students struggle with. So the big chunks, the big pieces of executive function, and these are kind of the three big rocks, um, flexible attention. So if I have flexible attention, I can shift my attention to the most important task. I can sustain my attention. I can stick with what we're doing right now. And then, gosh, my, my attention needed to shift over here. So the student that couldn't leave a class because he had work unfinished, he had sticky, he was stuck there, right? He stuck on that attention um, to that unfinished work. So now we've given him a strategy to let him shift his attention, but to know that it's still okay, right? Working memory, my working memory is dead after COVID this year. Working memory is the ability to use and remember important information. It's the ability to remember what's going on right now. Um, you know why phone numbers are seven digits, right? That's the, um, that's the solid, that's the common number of numbers that the human brain can remember. Um, there's some research out there that says that's why we pick seven digits um, for most phone numbers. Um, that's about the numbers. If you're trying to dial your grandma's phone number or your mom, now everything is on, is on you know, your cell phone and you can just dial it. But for many years, that was why. Inhibitory control is, oh gosh, anybody have impulsive students? Um, it's, or an impulsive spouse or you're impulsive, <laughs> right? It's the ability to pause and think about what we're about to do right before we do it. People that go to jail may not have good inhibitory control, <laughs> right? I, I thought, oh my gosh, this guy made me mad. I'm going to strangle him, but I didn't pause and think, should I do that, <laughs> right? Should this be the thing that I do before I do it? It helps us resist impulses. It helps us keep us on task and it helps us to set a goal and carry them out. So it helps us stick with it. So the three of these are kind of the big rocks of, of this area of executive functioning. So when do, these, when do these develop? So kids aren't born with these skills. It's something that they'll learn over the course of their whole life. Um, it happens really rapidly around three to five years old, kind of that preschool, kindergarten age. Their executive functioning skills are really building, but there's another burst around teenage, right? Around their teenage into adult years, you're going to get a whole burst of new development in executive functioning skills for students. Um, so know that. So if you're a middle school, high school age, executive functioning skills, it's definitely something that's still being developed. Um, and it's something that they're going to need their whole life. Um, so how do we support executive functioning? How do we support visual supports? Um, one of my favorite things um, is a contingency map. So we're going to talk about different graphic organizers that we can use uh, for, for helping our students, essentially. So I'm going to start with behavior, since this is a behavior institute. This is a contingency map. So a contingency map is a visual cue of how to get to the behavior that you want. It could be picture-based or it could be word-based. Depends on your student's needs. And we're going to try these out in just a minute. So this, this box right here is, this is the trigger. The green pathway on the top 
is what you want to happen. The red pathway on the bottom is probably the behavior that's happening that's interfering with the behavior. So let me tell you, this is Kim's personal, <laughs> this is Kim's personal contingency map. Every Christmas I get this out. Um, so my trigger is it's Christmas, right? It's the Christmas season. My normal, my unfortunate in the past pathway that I took was, I, my problem behavior was, I didn't set a budget, and I really like Christmas. So I will go to the store, I will buy 4,000 gifts. It, you know, yeah. even if I can't afford it, I still wanna buy it. I still just wanna buy it. So if I follow my red pathway, it's Christmas, I don't set a budget, I just go hog wild and buy up everything I can find because it's on sale. And then in January, I'm broke. So I gotta eat ramen. <laughs> January is the longest, saddest month because I gotta eat ramen, right? So my green pathway, what I need to do, and thankfully this year it mostly did happen. Um, it's Christmas. I want, I want to have money to pay my bills in January, so I set a budget, right? And then my outcome, my good outcome is I can eat and live in January. <laughs> so let me show you um, a couple of others that I've done. So these are very visual based. Inside of that folder is this handout. It's about 28 pages long. It is very much picture based, right? It's, it's very obviously pictures. Um, what you can do with this, and I'm thinking, I'm missing a slide. I had a slide in here that has, bum, bum, bum. yeah, it got deleted. Hm. All right, it is picture based. So it says during school, um, it's making a choice is the thing. So the trigger is during school, the child has been shouting out and whining and crying. Um, so the outcome is they still had to do their work and, um, and they missed some of their break time. That was the negative outcome that's currently happening. The green pathway is um, during school, I start my work right away. I finish my work. Uh, so now I can play computer or iPad. Um, so they get their work done. So that is the visual pathway. So what I wanna do is I wanna take about five minutes and I'm gonna give you this handout um, I don't have enough for everybody, so I'm gonna let you share, is what I'm gonna say. You're gonna work as a group. You're gonna work as a group, and then I'll explain this one to you. So it's the same, I'm gonna give you guys a couple so you can split. Same pathway, same behavior contingency map. These can be written words. You have sticky notes inside of your box, on your table. Get out your sticky notes. Actually, you know what, I might have enough here. Anybody not have one at this point that wants one? Let me give you one. Oh, it's sliding this way. All right, so get out the sticky notes that are in your box and you can do one as a group, right? We're gonna make one. So you can decide, you can do a student behavior or you can do your own or an adult behavior. It's up to you. So the green pathway is what do you want to happen and then the last box is the outcome. So let's take about five minutes and build a behavior pathway. I'm gonna set a timer. We'll, we'll pass these if you guys wanna see them. You can, in that set, there are pieces that you can make. You can print two. So that's yep, it's free. Okay. Yep, you guys can, yep. Missing. Oh, where did that go?
Anybody need, want help? About one minute. Okay. We were talking high school students, especially like more focused than yeah. middle school and like elementary. Because I'm, I came from middle school background. Okay. See, I've done middle okay. school for the last 13 years. <laughs> this year, I get flipped all the way to junior senior. Oh my. But the thing about it is, what I'm seeing is those same kids that I had. I'm mm -hmm. again. Okay. And like middle school, I'm hovering over, trying to keep yeah. them on task. Because you're building independence when you but hit. When I look at high school, yeah. The maturity that these kids have went through. I don't know if it's that executive functioning happened. It. But yeah. They take it their own age. I don't yes. really have to poke a rock. My son is 16. He's going to graduate this year, one year early, and I'm like, it's scary, but the maturity yeah. level versus. Yes. Yeah. It, there is. There's this oh, big my, growth. My wife teaches. Yeah. These are not the kids. It's not the same kid. Like, so what did you all do? I <laughs> you know. magic wand. Like, it's it's brain. Mature. It's brain. I mean, it is. It's brain processing. It's crazy how it works, isn't it? It is crazy. That's cool. That is cool. All right, guys, if you don't mind, if you're all done, I'm going to assume. So anybody struggle with that? I know this seems... This seems easy on one hand. Um, on one hand, it seems easy. The cool thing about this is I have used this with multiple students over the years. Uh, one of the sets that I'm giving you that's in there, the visual graphic ones, are from the Autism Helper. Um, she gave us permission to give them out. She charges like $30 for them. Um, it's pretty expensive. But they're inside of that, and they are picture-based. So if you have students that need picture-based, that might be an option for you. But the cool thing is, maybe you have a student that needs word-based, right? Um, I use these with a few different kids over the years. The nice, how do we figure out, how do we get to what we want? These are the, we use this, uh, it's kind of the deal. We use this deal with ourselves in our head all the time, right? So I think about how do I get to be, how do I get to do what I want? What outcome do I want? So what do I have to do in the middle to get to that outcome? Functional adults, we think about that in our head, right? It's the deal we make with ourselves in our head. Um, just for our students with disabilities, we need a visual. A lot of times they need that visual as the scaffolding to help them get to the point to where they can do that deal in their head. The nice thing about this is you don't have to use any of these specific papers. It could be hand drawn. It could be written out. Um, you could modify this to whatever is appropriate for your student. Um, I had a student that came to me that uh, whenever it was time, he was incredibly smart, very super smart. Um, his full scale IQ was over 177. They tested it outside of the school district. He was too smart for us to test. I'm not even joking. He had splinter skills into the 190s. I always think one day he'll cure cancer, but at that time he told me he was gonna build the best Minecraft world ever. <laughs> that was what he was gonna do, and he probably did. Um, when he came to us, his behavior pathway was, when I cry and scream and, and have a good old tantrum, then um, he, can't, he, he doesn't get the iPad. Um, at his previous school, when he cried and screamed, he went home. They sent him home. It's a reward, right? Home is where his, home was where his Minecraft iPad, is. it's <laughs> where the iPad and unlimited building of Minecraft was. And so they were accidentally reinforcing that behavior and when he came to me in my unit I told and and he ended up coming to me because nobody wanted him essentially he was way too smart for us he was he would write he knew Greek and Latin he'd self-taught himself um, 
he would write his answers sometime in Greek and Latin, and he always wrote one phrase at the bottom of the paper. And so I partnered, I contacted somebody at, at a college and said, hey, what does this say? And he's like, all these answers are right. But at the end, he's writing, Miss Kim, you're, you're, you're a stupid head <laughs> in Latin. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, he's probably right. So I just never, I just pretended like I never knew what it said. <laughs> that was my goal. But for years, he'd, he'd gotten away with, when I cry, scream, and have a big old tantrum, then I get sent home. Um, so we did a behavior pathway. How do you get to, how do you get to the iPad? Here's how you get to the iPad in, in my room going home wasn't an option anymore. So this is a nice, really flexible tool. You can make it be picture-based, you can make this be word-based. What do your students need? Um, so other graphic organizers. So here is what I wanna ask you to do. If you have a favorite resource or a favorite place that you go to for graphic organizers, that's what we're gonna talk about right now. Graphic organizers um, are things like it could be your KWL chart, right? It could be whatever kind of graphic organizers that you use. And so maybe you teach subject specific. Math, science, English all probably have some differentiated graphic organizers. So if you have a favorite graphic organizer source, write it on a sticky note and I'm gonna take it up. And maybe we don't, and it's okay, I'm gonna give us a couple. If you have one though, a source that you're like, hey, this is the place to go, right down the website or the resource. Maybe it comes along with, um, maybe it comes along with your science program that you use. I don't know. But I'm always trying to collect good graphic resource um, sources for those, good graphic organizer sources. Okay, anybody use guided notes? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Guided notes, middle school, high school age are the place to be. So I'm gonna give you a couple of resources that will make your graphic, that will go ahead and make your guided notes for you, um, that you can just copy and paste up in, um, and we'll talk about guided notes. So what are guided notes? Uh, middle school and high school, even upper elementary, we're teaching kids to take notes. <laughs> now, why might this be a struggle? Our kids don't write well. Maybe they don't type well. <laughs> Maybe their attention span is shot. Maybe they are chronically absent, and so they're not there to take the notes. And so when they get back, um, even for your students without disability that are chronically absent, they get back to school, they've missed you know, two days of English, whatever classes that they have, it's really hard to get caught up. So guided notes are a very nice place to start. Um, I've worked with a couple of middle school and high schools and they're giving all of their students access to guided notes, not just the students with disabilities. Um, so it becomes a really nice a really nice resource that doesn't make the kids with disabilities stand out. <laughs> You're not handing them this and be like, here you go. Um, but they still have to pay attention and hopefully fill in the blanks. The teachers that I see this use this with, she fills in the blanks where they pop up on the screen and she's doing this as a part of Microsoft Word in red or green, whatever their color code it is to, hey, write this down. Um, so she's teaching them, essentially guiding notes. So this comes from this Shan's social studies website, and this is still up. So this is the war on the specific, on, on the Pacific, not the specific. <laughs> so so um, list all that you see, uh, and it gives them the map, so they don't need to go and find it. Can you guys see this? I can't tell, okay, good. So after the attack on Pearl Harbor, blank, Japanese, Japan seized islands throughout the, of the Pacific. Um, so you're just filling in a few words, right? The goal is that they're filling in a few words, not all. So I have, it's not as long, it's short, it could be long, right? You could do a big giant one. Because they're following along too. Yes, yeah, everybody. So the schools that I've worked with that are using guided notes, everybody in the whole classroom gets this. Now, a few kids might only have, maybe the other kids are filling in one or two words, you know, they're filling in two or three words for every sentence. Maybe my kids that have pretty significant um, needs, maybe they write very slowly. Maybe they're filling in one word, but you can't, their organizer is going to look exactly the same, only they're just going to have that one spot. Do you use pictures with this? You could. Absolutely. You could. You can have them fill it in with a picture. I have seen it be modified to where, um, for a student who did not write at all, um, his was on the computer. 
and it was saved as a PDF on the computer, and he knew how to go in and type it in. I've seen it be done that way. I've seen it be done to where it's cut and paste. They're already cut out. If we want to go really low tech, the words are cut out, and those kids are quickly pasting them in as they go because they could not physically write it all, but they could cut and paste if they were already cut. It's essentially. more like a word bank. Right. Do what now? Like a word bank. Right, from a word bank. They were just filling. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And the teachers that are using these, they color code them. So um, the words are, up as they pop in that they need to fill in the blank, they don't show up black. They show up purple or green, something that says, hey, yeah, they stand out, so we make sure kids write them down. So this is a bigger example, um, just a bigger, and they did, they took a lot of um, universal design for learning, right, UDL. Universal design for learning looks at what does everybody in this crowd need to succeed? Um, so it's a really nice place for that. Um, so this is just pictures out of the textbook, and the directions on the side say, what do you, how do you think the Japanese, so, so this is Japanese soldiers atop a captured American gun in the Philippines. So they were supposed to fill in the thought bubbles. Um, and so they're only filling in two words. What do they think they thought? So it was a way to get kids motivated. <laughs> they're looking at the picture. Um, it's a little less intense than filling in all of the blanks. Um, so, right? <laughs> you have to be careful. It's a, you it's could. A they might right? say, and that's the truth. Sometimes, sometimes uh, I've seen this one be done, and one of the kids said, I want to kill everybody. Yeah. Uh, you know, and you just, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, and they might have been thinking that. I don't know. I hope not. But, right? Um, so, yeah. So, and the teacher usually, before we start this out, the teacher will do a couple of examples and they do a whole class. So the teacher does one, so the teacher models, and then they do what we all do together. So then they all do one together, and then they move on to here, do your own. Um, but, yeah, it's engaging, right? Taking notes is awful. <laughs> Let's be real here. Taking notes is terrible. I'll never forget um, my first year of college. Uh, I took an 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. anatomy class. I got off of work at 1 a.m., 1 o'clock in the morning. I took an 8 a.m. anatomy class. I'll never forget trying to take notes after I hadn't had enough sleep. And it was my first year of college, and I was working, and I was so overwhelmed. Like, the stress level. <laughs> and I'm a reasonably functional adult, but at 18, 19, not so much, maybe. <laughs> I should have made better life choices. After that first year, I realized I could control what time my classes were. I did not have to take an 8 a.m. class anymore. The kids don't have that control, right? School starts when it starts. And, and so this gives back what you can give back. And could you also uh, like some of the prizes, maybe, for the kids to pick from the kids on Saturday? Yes, you could. And that's the nice thing is that you can, you can adjust it. Right. You can adjust it for whatever your kids need. Maybe you give them some, here are some options. Which one do you think might be the right response? Right, it could be, it could be Velcro. And if you're a subject, history, freshman history, the content's gonna be the same every year, right? Same thing probably for middle school. You're gonna get the same big topics every year. Now if you're trying to build that kind of a library, Maybe you can't build that every month, but for one year, maybe you build every month, you build one step, and then, the, you know what I mean? So then the, within two years or three years, you'd have the whole shebang, yeah. essentially. History doesn't change too much, right? Some of those things don't change too much, so it would be something you could do. So this top website takes you to a resource that will build your guided notes for you for free. Okay. Um, wow. Yes, you literally just photocopy. I'll. I'll I'm gonna wait until the end to go to that website because if I go out, I'm not sure I can get us back into the PowerPoint. So I will show it to you at the end. We're, we're, I'll, I promise I'll show it to you at the end. But if it emails you, you can go in. Now it won't add, it's not gonna add in all the pictures, right? But it will be the one that takes away the words. So you'll have to insert your own pictures if you want that. Um, and the bottom resource is, this is Teacher Toolkit, hundreds, lots and lots of um, literature-based resources for guided notes, for um, inclusion-based practices that are free. 
tons of stuff already made that you can just go to and check out. So know what those are there. And I'll open those at the end, and I'm going to end in just a few minutes. I'll open those up in a minute because I'm not sure once I go out I can get that in. Okay, so Cornell notes. Have you guys heard of Cornell notes? Yeah, high school, a lot of times, Cornell notes are another good place that you can go. Cornell notes are a little bit unique because it's a system of note taking that allows you to kind of visually organize your notes. This stuff's falling off the wall. It's the end of the day. Just don't fill off the wall. It's time to go home. Um, so it allows you to visually organize your notes and then quiz yourself later on with the materials that you make. So I had never, I hadn't really heard of Cornell notes. Um, so these are math. That's what it's yeah. Math. So the way that these work are, in the green box, you're going to record um, during the lesson, so in, in this big square box, not the green, in the big square box, during the lesson, the student is supposed to record as many facts as they can. And now you can still make these be guided notes where you're giving them notes and they're not having to fill it in all on their own, right? In the green box, at the end, um, they are, hold on, wait. So at the bottom, you summarize. Here you take your notes. You're in the actual note-taking chance. At the bottom, you summarize. And then over here in the green, you go back and write the questions. Am I telling it right? Because if I'm messing it up, you just tell me. My graphic organizer has me tossed off. The arrows are, are not quite where I think they should be pointed. The green box, you're writing your questions. So these notes that I wrote out here, what questions do they answer that might show up later on a test? I wish I'd known about Cornell notes when I was in college during that anatomy class, right? It would have been so helpful. So here's an example, right? So over here are your main ideas, your questions, and your key, like key vocabulary. And then out here in the middle part, out here in the middle part are your important dates, people. It could be all of your math facts. Um, it could be diagrams, math formulas. And then at the bottom, you summarize it. So that when it's time to go back and study, um, then you have some options for that. I do like Cornell notes, and there's something that uh, was different. So here's some examples of what they might look like. And there are a math example and an English example of what it might look like. You're using this as a guided note, right? You could put this to where the student is just filling in key facts, a few pieces of it. It could be, maybe they're a student who doesn't need that level. Maybe they're a student who still needs a minimum amount of supports, and so this is the system that you're teaching them. It could go either way. It could absolutely go either way. Here are some other examples. So this is Cornell notes made into guided notes, right? And it's color coded. It is color coded. Well, you can give them a highlighter. Absolutely. And let them highlight. Yeah, absolutely. So it's flexibility, right? That's what universal design for learning is kind of looking at. Here's the whole crowd. I've got 29 kids. Probably all 29 need something mostly different. How do we how do we make this broad enough to hit enough people to where we can do the same thing and be flexible with it? I really like the Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So something, a cool option for middle school, high school age for those students that are out there. All right. Let me show you graphic organizers, and then I'm going to take what time is it? All right. We're good. It's 1:32. We're not late. All right. <laughs> Other graphic organizers. Graphic organizers are phenomenal. They're a flexible teaching tool that we can use to take the abstract concept um, that's going to support our understanding and our comprehension. And the nice thing is it's going to fit a lot of students. Gen Ed, regular Ed, who hasn't done the hamburger? Who has not done the hamburger paragraph? <laughs> yeah. Have you guys seen the hamburgers? I totally use this with my personal child. But when we were riding, he's like, this is so dumb, it's a hamburger. And I'm like, no, no, but think about it. Can you tell me what the parts are? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's why. <laughs> and maybe this is a student who doesn't ride. Maybe you're giving them the sentences and they're putting them on, right? You can adapt this all the way to the level of, I cannot write my own sentences. 
to where you're giving them the sentences and they're just matching them or giving them options of what they might put in there. Um, maybe this is they're filling the whole thing out on their own. It could be either end. Uh, and this comes from Reading Rockets. Have you guys heard of Reading Rockets? Yeah, Reading Rockets has some really nice stuff out there. Other graphic organizers, this is a visual, right? This is my, this is my lovely visual round, bold, or flat. So it's still a graphic organizer, but now it's more hands-on. If I have students that need that more hands-on piece. Um, right, and it's fine. Who doesn't like a hula hoop? <laughs> Even high school and middle schoolers will like a hula hoop sometimes. Um, other, this is a concept map. I'm sure you guys have seen concept maps out there. Um, this was a really cool activity. And if you go to this website, you can watch a video. Um, I believe it shows a video of a class doing this activity. So they did a concept map of Moby Dick. Um, and the way that they modified it was everybody had, they wanted everybody to make a concept map. Some of the students got just blank cards. Some of them got this page. Some of them got a page with the cards already made and they were just deciding what cards went where. Um, and the cards were kind of color coded like you see here. So just a different way to do a concept map that I hadn't seen before that took it for the whole class all the way from a variety of, a variety of levels. Could all still do it. So it was a pretty neat option. Okay, let me show you the resources. This is the guided notes maker. So the way that this works is you can put a course title. You don't have to do that. You can put whatever date. You can give it a title for your own self, right? And then you copy and paste your information that you want to be turned into a graphic organizer. So this little lightning bolt icon, you use it to choose what section you're going to blank out. And then you choose this little lightning bolt icon with a, the, with a little, it has a little red negative on it to unblink it. So if you blink something you didn't want, you can fix it back. Um, and then it shows you what it will look like. And then you, you hit, you're going to put send, you can send it as a PDF or you can have it emailed to you, whichever one you want. Now it's not going to put the pictures in, right? It's not going to add your pictures in. It's not going to do anything like that. But if I'm just getting started, it's going to be a really nice resource for that. So know that. That's one option. And then the other, the other option is this. So this is from Ditch the Textbook, um, ditchthetextbook.com. And I'm going to scroll down, so close your eyes if that's going to bother you. This is 25 free Google Drawing Graphic Organizers. And it shows you how to make your own, which I'm not very tech savvy is what I'm going to say. <laughs> but it has timelines that are already made, right? That you're just, you can use to add, you can customize. Cause and chain, it has a fishbone planner. Um, it has that concept map, the word, word web systematic map. It has flow charts. It has hexagonal thinking. It has character maps. It has a resource for that Cornell note taking. All kinds, it has some vocabulary clusters, um, vocabulary concept maps. Lots and lots of graphic organizers. They have a, it has an audio podcast summary. I thought that was cool. Paint chip vocabulary, sequencing. It goes on and on for quite a way. You can customize these, and there are options in there that kind of teach you how to make your own using PowerPoint. If you're technologically advanced, there might be some good options for you in there. Can you actually say at least who your keys are? Yeah, yeah, this is free. This is just ditch the textbook. It's in that, the website for that is in that PowerPoint. It's the very last slide. Okay. So if you go to that, you can ask. Yeah, you can send this to kids. Kids could create their own graphic work. Oh, not this one. Absolutely. You could get, it's a it's a way that you could get your, your, your kids who are always done early, your kids who always need more. Maybe this is a job. No joke. Maybe this is a job for them. If we use the Google Play search box, that would be. Yeah, absolutely. So these are my list of suggestions, does that make sense? Um, just something different, right? Something outside of the box. 
Uh, and hopefully the ability to hit, you guys know, it's hard to hit every single child with every single activity. But when we go to something that allows a little bit more flexibility, it makes it more likely that it could happen. Um, I always tell people, start small. Don't go, don't go home and try to kill yourself. Um, right? You have to eat, think, and live. So maybe you can't, you can't change every single activity that you do into some sort of graphic organizer next week. It'll be too much. Um, you'll get burned out, right? So start small. Choose a few things. Maybe you already have a program that does some of that for you. I, uh, we use a really good um, science program. They already had a lot of graphic organizers. It already had a lot of that built into it. So hopefully you have access to some of those kinds of 